yourself very quickly in the nutshell what you do. Yes. Um, I'm a global executive coach. I work with leaders, international leaders and international teams. I'm also a leadership consultant and an intercultural trainer. Fantastic. Fantastic profile. I'd like simply to add uh, something which is to me quite important to be said, is that this person on my left or on your right, she's speaking Italian, German, English, Swedish. She understands... Come on. Don't be so modest. She understands French and she understands Spanish. What else? And uh, another interesting stuff, and you will easily understand why we wanted to develop this topic of uh, multiculturalism all over the world, which became today, I would say, something like uh, mandatory everywhere. Uh, so why we would like to develop it? Because, first of all, Miriam lived for 10 years in Germany, then... Two years in Singapore, a couple of months in uh, South Korea. South Korea, not North Korea, okay? And what about me? It's been 19 years I live in France. Have I said that you were Italian? Mm, I'm Italian. Okay, so she's Italian. I'm Russian, okay? It's been 19 years I live in France. <laughs> And uh, before that I lived uh, in Mongolia, in Czech Republic, a little bit in Africa, particularly in, in Namibia, and a little bit in Spain. Now, we are both expats since ages now, and uh, my first question to you, can you give me your definition, your point of view about the multiculturalism? How you, for example, lived it during, during your expatriation experiences? Multiculturalism, to me, first of all, very basically, is when uh, people from different cultures mm. live or work together. That's when you've got people from different cultures who um, come from very different backgrounds, have different uh, habits, different visions of the world, different, different uh, values, different ideas of what is right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And people uh, like this, from these different backgrounds, they come to live together uh, in the same country or they have to work together okay for example yeah. in, a, in a multicultural team for you tolerance does it make part of multiculturalism or not except again except professional context mm -hmm. which is something more global let's let's speak simply about a single country whatever the country it is because today you have immigrants expats uh, whatever in every <clears throat> in every country mm -hmm. okay so taking into consideration one single country again whatever the country it is does tolerance make part of multiculturalism uh, well that's a very good question thank you um, it depends on what you mean by tolerance and it depends on what view a I will tell has... you afterwards what I mean, yeah. but I'd like to hear what you think about it. Yes, um, mm. it depends on, <clears throat> on what a person um, considers to be tolerance. Mm. Now, nowadays, for example, we've got this idea in many, in many countries that tolerance is, tolerance is good, you know, it is a sign of uh, being, um, being human, uh, it's a sign of being uh, open and... Uh, Open-minded? Open, yeah, it's a sign of being open-minded also, mm -hmm. you know, and there is this idea that we need to be tolerant in the sense that uh, we need to um, accept, we need to accept people from other cultures mm -hmm. and uh, we need to accept their behavior just as it is. Mm -hmm. you know? So in this context, for you, to to tolerance makes part of the multiculturalism? Um, well, this is the view that many people share. You know, it's okay. this idea that nowadays you should be, your, um, your country should be open, you know, to, to receiving as many people from, from other countries. Uh, from other countries and thus from other cultures. And from other cultures, you know, you should, uh, there is this expectation, you know, of, uh, of uh, you know, being open to, to receive mm -hmm. these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm expectation of um, accepting that uh, people from these cultures behave like they like, like they, they want like they want yes okay. so there is this idea that uh, if you have um, you know in a, in a modern uh, civilized country now nowadays you know there's this idea that uh, multiculturalism is good 
and the tolerance is good in that sense, you know, that you're just open to accepting more or less anything, mm -hmm. you know, about, uh, about the behavior mm -hmm. um, and the rules and norms of another culture. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, my concern or my, my question would be, is this really possible? And what do you mean? What, what is, is it possible? really possible to be tolerant like this? And, mm -hmm. first, and more than this is, does this make sense? Mm -hmm. because, uh, um, because I think that there is this idealized vision of tolerance. Um, but uh, I mean, let's, let's put it this way. Imagine that you have, uh, you're, you're at home, you have, you've got your own house. Mm -hmm. um, you're inviting people, you're inviting someone uh, into your house. So you are tolerant, you are welcoming, you are uh, you're hospitable, you know, you accept that uh, someone comes into your house. Mm -hmm. um, so tolerance, how far does tolerance go? I mean, would, if you were tolerant, would that mean that uh, you would allow this person to come into your house and to do just whatever they like in, in your house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's really about uh, how much do you tolerate, actually, actually, you know, is it okay that... Uh, um, you invite someone into your house and uh, uh, this person can, you know, can make everything dirty and uh, use everything without Make a respect. mess, let's say, make, make a mess a, in, your, in your house. Yeah, make a mess and, uh, you know, stay in your house without respecting you and actually maybe even um, forcing you to change your rules of the house, so to yeah, speak, you yeah, know. Yeah, okay. So, uh, how far should tolerance go? I mean, what is tolerance actually? How much should you tolerate? Okay, okay, okay. May I, may I give, um, let's say, a kind of resume of what you said with mm -hmm. my approach of things mm -hmm. about multiculturalism and uh, tolerance. So, tolerance, uh, this is a kind of notion which, to me, uh, means that I accept whatever another people do, I accept everything mm -hmm. without being... Uh, aggressive without saying any word whatever so whatever wh whatever happens in front of me I accept it I'm tolerant mm -hmm. this is what tolerance means yeah. okay whatever yeah. happens I'm tolerant mm -hmm. I live in my own country so my country is uh, the hosting country there are some immigrants some expats whatever mm -hmm. actually it's not even about if we are if we are speaking about immigrants or expats it's about foreigners coming in a, in a given hosting country, mm -hmm. okay? So, this is my country, and these people start to do whatever they want, applying their own rules, they try to, to diffuse, to some extent, their own culture in my country, so am I supposed to, to, to be tolerant? And how long am I supposed to, uh, to be tolerant? Mm -hmm. Can we say that tolerance is the uh, synonymous of multiculturalism? I think that, depending on how it's described in some dictionaries, or for example, depending on how it's explained in today's media everywhere, when you speak about multiculturalism, it's something where, I mean, in an in a idealistic definition, multiculturalism is a social organization where different cultures, people from different countries, are living together. This is what I said before, this is the art of living together. This is an idealistic mm -hmm. definition. I'm not talking about what happens today, for example, in Europe, in the US, or in other countries. Mm -hmm. okay? Experiencing this art of living together, is it about tolerance or is it something different? This mm -hmm. is my question to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, to me, actually, it's got nothing to do with tolerance. Mm -hmm. You know, starting from this perspective of being a, an art, the art mm -hmm. of, of living together in a way that is positive for and constructive for both sides. It's, uh, to me, it is about um, several things. Like, first of all, being aware of the fact that uh, you are people from different cultures. Being aware of the fact that there, is, there are differences, which is already something that is not really obvious for everyone. You know? mm -hmm. It's like a saying, thinking, if, if you are different from me, uh, it means that you're wrong. You, there is something wrong with you because uh, uh, only my way is right, so to speak, you know. So there needs to be an awareness of the fact that there, there, is di there are differences 
and uh, um, between, between the people, between the cultures, and it is important to understand that these differences are not right or wrong. You, know, mm -hmm. you need to understand why people behave in a different way. Tolerance, for example, means that I am right, I am the host, I am whatever, you know, and I tolerate you, you know, just like saying you're actually some sort of inferior, but I tolerate you, I tolerate your behavior. Well, yeah. I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say particularly that uh, someone in front of me is uh, in, in fair, inferior. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. I would say that, uh, sorry for interrupting you, sure. but just I want to be precise because since the topic is really not politically correct mm -hmm. and, and also it's a complicated, something complicated to be understood because there are a lot of people who mess everything. So I'd like us to be uh, the more precise possible, mm -hmm. okay? So it's not about inferiority or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, tolerance is when I say nothing. There is something mm -hmm. with, with what I'm not okay, mm -hmm. I'm not ha happy about, but I say nothing. I leave it like it yeah. is. Yeah. And the problem of tolerance is that if I say nothing, so the problem is getting bigger and bigger. Yes, right. Right. So is that multiculturalism? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah, right. This is my opinion, or mm -hmm. maybe yeah. this is our opinion. You were talking about, um, about tolerance uh, in terms of uh, interculturalism. Let's try to define what is intercultural in intelligence, which is used to be actually our professional context since years. So, to you, what is intercultural intelligence? Mm -hmm. Well, intercultural intelligence to me is what makes it possible mm. to de develop this art of living and working together, mm -hmm. you know, between, among people from different cultures. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that uh, um, without this intercultural inter intelligence, mm -hmm. which starts from awareness, yeah. you do not really understand in what ways your culture is different from, from the culture of the others. You do not understand why you behave in a certain way and why the others from, from other cultures behave in, another, in a different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, without this inter intercultural intelligence, you are not even able then also to set those healthy boundaries that are really important in order to be able to work and live together mm -hmm. in, a, in a constructive and positive way. So well, that's why I think that actually tolerance has got nothing to do with uh, intercultural intelligence. You know, it's, about, uh, it's not about tolerance, it's about become, becoming really aware um, and knowing, gaining also the knowledge of uh, who are you, what is your culture, what are... Sociologically the, speaking. What are the values mm -hmm. of your culture? What, is, uh, what does your culture consider right? What does it consider wrong? What are the rules of your own cultures? Um, and how from this, from your own perspective or from the perspective of your own culture, mm -hmm. you perceive another culture. Exactly. And how these cultures perceive you. Intercultural intelligence, it's not, it's not about tolerance. It's um, something which makes us understand another cultures, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. understand, right. realize, and maybe afterwards in professional or even not professional context, apply this knowledge in order to cohabitate mm -hmm. not through the tolerance but in a right way with different cultures with immigrants with expats or even maybe sometimes with people from our own country but coming from another region for example in italy there are a lot of different cultural different differences from one region to another like in france so again intercultural intelligence it's the art of understanding and not tolerating yeah. other cultures. Right? Now, if we come back to the multiculturalism, how can we link these three notions? Interculturalism, which is actually a kind of science, so to speak, tolerance and multiculturalism. Well, they, they are linked to a certain extent. I think we are putting the focus on, on the wrong aspect, actually. Okay. Uh, there is too much focus on tolerance, which actually uh, is very misleading, because tolerance does not really help you. Actually, it 
prevents you from actually destroy, so to speak, you know, because uh, it's uh, like if you have, if you're too tolerant, it means that you're not setting the right boundaries. You're not setting clear boundaries. Exactly. I would say that the, the tolerance erases these boundaries. Yes, yes, exactly. And everything is becoming like a huge field yeah. in which everyone is installed and it's a huge mess. Yeah. Like everything is okay, everything is permitted, everything is acceptable, yeah, but then yeah. you have got a mess. Yeah. You know, there is no limits. Exactly, it doesn't work. Okay, okay. Um, so I think that uh, the, the focus should not be on tolerance. It should be really on understanding, understanding your own culture and the, the other people's culture. Mm -hmm. Because that is the only way in which you can understand uh, what is what is really important for you, what is really important for the other, and that is the only way, um, that uh, is the only thing that allows you actually to also find out and discuss or find also an agreement on how you can live together or work together, you know, in a constructive way. Because otherwise it's just, uh, you know, everything is just an assumption. You know, we, we just... We, what do you mean? We just assume that uh, the other is, uh, is wrong, or we assume that the other is behaving in a, in a way that is not okay, or we assume that we should be tolerant of everything. You know, it's just assumptions, and our assumptions are based on our own values, on our own perception of the world, you know, and maybe we might actually, um, we might really tolerate stuff <laughs> from another culture that the other culture is not is not expecting us to tolerate. Mm -hmm. But we think from our perspective that it is right to tolerate it, you know. But we are making a big mistake. I would even say, for example, yes, uh, for sure it's a big mistake. But, but just I because it is based on our own assumption, on, on, you know, because we are actually, we think that the others see the things I don't exactly think, Yes, I don't think that this assumption would be something normal let's say in the western in the western community in the western society if this assumption through this notion of tolerance wouldn't be imposed to some extent mm. from the medias from mm. our mm. Uh, politics etc uh, etc et so it was imposed but mm -hmm. it's not something natural for mm. human nature to mm -hmm. be tolerant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean we are supposed to be tolerant since we live in this organization which is our human society we are supposed to be tolerant to some things but there are limits mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and these boundaries are how we said just before or i said these boundaries are erased physically mm -hmm. and made mentally through this tolerance mm -hmm. so if for example there is a problem in front of me that i tolerate and i don't don't try to stop, yeah. I don't try to correct it, you know, and to try to, to direct it in a right way, mm -hmm. so the problem is getting bigger and bigger. Right. And uh, how long are we supposed to be tolerant to this bigger and bigger problem? Yeah, right. This is, this is my question, okay? Yeah. Now, I'd like to finish just with one <laughs> simple resume, we, we will try to do it together. So, yeah. we concluded that tolerance it's, it's not something normal in terms of multiculturalism, mm -hmm. okay? Because whatever the number of cultures or immigrants or expats are cohabitating together in one country or on one continent, for example, like in Europe, uh, we have to determine to put some boundaries, some limits. Mm -hmm. Who is supposed to, to be integrated? Who is supposed to, to adapt? It's not the hosting country, it's not the local people, but the expats and the immigrants coming in this country. So, talking about this, I would like to stress the fact that the tolerance is not multiculturalism. And multiculturalism is not tolerance. It's about understanding and not tolerating other cultures, which is totally different. Either we speak about professional context, or we speak about globally social context in a, in a given country. Yeah, I think, um, I think it is really important nowadays to become um, more aware of what is happening. Mm. You know, what, what is happening in, in our world. And it is, um, you know, you were talking about understanding others. Mm -hmm. 
that is already a big, big step because when yeah. you understand the other, you understand also why they are different and you also understand that being different is not, there's nothing wrong with being different. Yeah. Um, Absolutely not. Uh, it is just a fact of understanding why the other is different uh, yeah. and why you are perceived as being different uh, in the eyes of the other. And it is about, uh, uh, well, going also the step further, you know. Uh, understanding is one thing, but then you need also to make sense of this, you know, mm -hmm. of the difference. And if you want to, to, to live and work together effectively with people from other cultures, you need to act also. You know, it's understanding is the first step, but then you need to also find a way to meet the other. Also to set certain boundaries, you need to find a way to understand what is important for you, what is important for the other, mm -hmm. and then find also an agreement, so to speak, on how to live and work together effectively. Well, the, the, the huge problem is actually in fighting this agreement, because, mm -hmm. uh, because you know, every, everyone tries to get a bigger piece, you know, in everything. Uh, without really trying to understand what what the the other wants mm -hmm. or what he needs, he or she needs, okay. And the biggest problem in in all of this is determining this agreement, and this is why this multiculturalism, I would say, has so many pain, if I can say mm -hmm. so, in its functioning. Yeah. It doesn't really work. And well, let's say my my last question. Do you think multiculturalism, it, it's something normal for, for humans in general? I mean, do you think it can really work well, in human society, whatever, whatever uh, nationalities are present in, in, in this multiculturalism? Mm -hmm. Well, multiculturalism has worked, <laughs> so to speak, Where, uh, well. over, over, all these, over all the centuries. Mm -hmm. you know, nowadays, there, are, there is no country in the world where you have people who are just from one culture. Mm -hmm. So multiculturalism has worked in the sense that people have been living and working together, people from different cultures. Mm -hmm. The question is, does it work well? Mm -hmm. Is it effective or is there a way to make it work better? You know, because uh, also when you were saying before about the fact that, uh, you know, when you need to, when you want to find an agreement between the two cultures and then there is this, uh, you know, this tendency maybe from one culture to try and get more, you know, mm -hmm. uh, try, you know, this, there's this win-lose, yeah. win-lose approach. Uh, you know, it's also about, it's also a matter of uh, intelligence, so to speak, and maybe looking at things uh, not just from a short term perspective because on a short term per perspective i might have the impression that i'm winning in, mm -hmm. if i get more from you you know yeah. i am as somehow i'm imposing my way or, or i'm finding the way in order to get more and you get less mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this gives me a win a quick win but then in the end does it really help me in the long term to have a, a productive uh, relationship with, uh, with, with you from, from the other culture. I mean, we, we can see that, that very easily in uh, multicultural teams, you know. Mm -hmm. um, in a professional context. In a professional context, yeah, I mean, that's a simple, uh, simple example because uh, in a professional context, a multicultural team has a common goal to achieve. Yeah. So, Which is not the case in the global society, yeah, yeah. basically. Basically, yes, basically, even though the common goal could be to live uh, uh, decently and peacefully and positively this together. Is, uh, the problem is that this is never a common goal. People don't care about it. Yeah. Because the... the but even... In the, just, just a second. In the hosting country, the locals, which are already living in this country mm -hmm. for, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 50, 60 years, mm -hmm. they are at their, at their house. Mm -hmm. They don't care about to live... Uh, effectively, uh, in, in a good way uh, with uh, whoever, they simply want that all people who are coming to this country, that they adapt to the local rules, mm -hmm. to the local habits, to the local culture, mm -hmm. to everything local, and they try to be integrated in the local society. This is what the hosting country wants. Mm -hmm. But it sure. doesn't function, it doesn't work like this mm -hmm. every time, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, the examples are so numerous everywhere in all countries, particularly in this last year, that I tend to say that maybe finally multiculturalism, it's, it's not something, uh, something really um, feasible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Within, within the human nature. Mm -hmm. Because yes. uh, it's like, for example, if, if we compare it with uh, animals, you know, mm -hmm. all animals, without any exception, they protect their land, mm -hmm. their territory. Yeah. All animals do it. Mm -hmm. And following the theory that we are coming from this animal world, so to some extent, we basically protect our house, our, mm -hmm. our nation, mm -hmm. our country. Mm -hmm. okay? We are patriots. It's, afterwards, we can speak about all this social stuff which is uh, proper to, to humans, mm -hmm. which is not proper to, to, to animals. But this parallel, I give it intentionally, uh, on purpose, because we protect actually our house. Mm -hmm. Okay? And multiculturalism, particularly how it's ex how it explained today in all medias, multiculturalism, it's about tolerance, meaning whoever comes to your country, you simply shut up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? And you tolerate whatever happens. Yeah. Okay? If some people work. kill in another, if some people rape another, or if some people, I don't know, get more rights arriving mm -hmm, to your mm -hmm. country. And you don't have these rights living yeah. here since 40 years. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not normal. Yeah. This is not multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's just one thing, one last thing that I would like to, to say is that um, we should not take uh, the aspect of uh, multiculturalism too lightly. Because actually what is happening today in the world is something that uh, is going to have an impact on our future. It is yeah. having an impact on our present life, but it is going to have an even bigger impact on the future. So it is very important to understand what to focus our attention on. Because if we focus our attention on the wrong things, we really risk a big mess. <laughs> we really risk uh, to get things totally out of control. Mm. Um, so the aspect of multiculturalism, you know, it might, might sound something very theoret theoretical, very abstract, but it is something that is touching our lives uh, on a very practical and concrete way everywhere, wherever we live in the world today. I would also say that, uh, for example, uh, talking about democracy, which is, okay, let's say a perfect invention, but democracy doesn't mean uh, not having any boundaries. It doesn't mean that democracy is the synonym, again, of tolerance, okay? Because we have to put some boundaries, we have to put some limits in our social organization, particularly when it comes to the multiculturalism, where, where different cultures, different nationalities, with different habits, with different points of view, with different values, are supposed to live together. So we have to put these boundaries without erasing it with this stupid notion of tolerance or Maybe finally tolerance is not a stupid notion, but at least it depends on how we understand it and how we apply it. Because if tolerance means I say nothing and they can do whatever they want, this is not tolerance. Toler tolerance means that there are some boundaries, there are some limits, but there are things that I can tolerate because I, am, I realize, I understand that these people are different that these people have their own religion, culture, whatever, okay, but I don't tolerate absolutely everything without saying nothing. Mm -hmm. Was I clear enough? Yeah, <laughs> to me. Perfect. <laughs> so, see you later, alligator, and thank you for watching. Thank it, you, bye-bye. It was Miriam Kelegerin <laughs> and Anton Malafé. Bye.